In this video, we're going to be looking at comparing and evaluating large language models using LangChain. So one of the issues that a number of people have asked me questions about is how do I know if this model is going to be good for production, etc. Basically, if I compare it to ChatGPT, it's nowhere near as good. The obvious thing is that, of course, a lot of these models are not going to be anywhere near ChatGPT because they don't have the same fine tuning. They haven't been trained on the same data. They're probably not the same size, etc. What we can do, though, is we can set up a bunch of models and we can then basically ping them with the same prompts and see, OK, what do we get back? Are we getting back similar things? And you will find that some of the models are really good for maybe classification or fact extraction, much more than they are for other tasks that are maybe creative writing or something like that. So this allows you then to see that, okay, maybe on certain tasks, on certain chains, I can get away with using a much cheaper model or a model that I'm just pinging from the Hugging Face Hub rather than having to spend money on tokens from the ChatGPT API. So let's just have a look at this. I've just got it set up in here. As always, the collab to this is in the description. All of my videos, I've put the collab in the description. And first off, we're going to basically, once we've set up our keys, so I'm going to be using OpenAI, Cohere, and Hugging Face. We're going to compare about seven different models in here. And we're going to set up the models. And in this case, I'm actually going to use the same temperature for each model. So remember, the temperature is what causes the randomness. I'm not going to set it totally to zero, but I'm going to set it very low in this case. Now, I encourage you to experiment with this and go through and do these yourself. So the first model that we're setting up is the FLAN 20 billion model. So this is the model that I've done, I think, a couple of videos on already. It came out recently. This is a fine-tuned version of... with the instruction tuning of the UL2 20 billion model. On top of that, we've also got the FLAN T5 XXL model. So this is an 11 billion parameter model. And you see both of these we are using from Hugging Face Hub rather than locally. We could load some of these up locally. I've just chosen in this one to make it simple for people so that you would just go for the ones in Hub. If you're interested to do it locally, have a look at my video on the Hugging Face and serving those models like locally. Okay, so I wanted to try and compare the GPT Neo XT 20 billion, and I've got this working in a CoLab locally, but unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be working when I ping the Hugging Face Hub for this, which is not surprising, right? It's quite a big model. The same is true for the Bloom 7 billion parameter model. Again, these models cost a fair bit of money to serve. My guess is that they're not serving it unless you're paying for it. One of the ones that they are serving, which seems pretty cool though, is the GPT-J6B model. So this is a 6 billion parameter model. This is actually reasonably, it's not a totally new model that's come out in the last month or so. This is a while back. So these are the models that we're getting from Hugging Face Hub. From OpenAI, I'm gonna get two models. We're gonna get the ChatGPT Turbo model, all right, so GPT 3.5 Turbo, and we're going to get the Text Da Vinci 003 model, which is the old model that everyone used to use before the ChatGPT API came. From Cohere, we're going to get two models from them. So we're going to get the Command XL. So Cohere Command models are the same as the Instruct models. So if you think about the Text Da Vinci this is a retraining of the GPT instruct model. This is the same kind of thing. They call them command models. And this is their Excel model. And then they have an Excel nightly, which apparently is up, just updated as it's training. So they've got this thing constantly training and they do a checkpoint. And this is you're getting the, the last checkpoint from that. In the past, I've looked at, you know, when I've looked at Cohere, I've tended to just use this one. This whole sort of comparison thing has changed my mind about this as you'll see when we go through this. So we've got our models up, right? Or we've got our language model chains up for those. Once we've got those set up, we need to basically set up a model laboratory. So LangChain now has this ability in here to run a variety of tests in here. And we can basically just do this by importing the model laboratory. And then I'm just gonna set up a simple prompt template. And then we're gonna set up a model laboratory passing in all the models that we want to test and passing in the prompt that I've got here. So this is going to be called lab. So we've got the basics of those and we've got each of these set up. And now, as long as we're sticking to this kind of prompt, we can just pass in lab.compare and pass in our input and it will then go through it. So you can see, first up, we've got the ChatGPT API. So here I'm asking, 
What is the opposite of up? Ideally, I think most humans would just say down, but it's interesting that the ChatGPT goes into a long sort of evaluation, most likely because we've got this chain of thought prompting going on here. Let's think step by step, right? So that's the chain of idea here. So if we wanted to, we could turn this off and just see, okay, what does it give us without any of that? But if we look, it sure, eventually it does get to the right answer, I think. Therefore, the opposite of up is down. Okay, so eventually it does get to the right model and we can see, therefore, the opposite of up is down. If we come back over here and we can see the old GPT-3 model actually wasn't trained, I don't think, with chain of thought prompting in it. And you can see that it just goes straight for the answer. The opposite of up is down. So it's important that you understand the reasons why these are giving different answers, because we've asked for the chain of thought prompt, we've used chain of thought prompting, we're asking for the reasoning, or let's think step by step here. We come to the GPT-J6, this gets it right. What is the opposite of up? The opposite of up is down. What is the opposite? But then it goes on, just an on and on. Like step two, it's very verbose there and maybe not ideal for what we want. If we come to the FLAN 20 billion model, we can see that, okay, we're getting down is the opposite of up. That, that's pretty good. We've got a bit of the reasoning and we've got the answer down. So that's probably one of the better ones that we've had so far. If we look at the T5XXL, again, the FLAN model, we can see that it's it's doing pretty good, but then it goes off on this direction of the sun. The sun is all in the sky before it eventually gets to the answer is down. So you can sort of evaluate. And what I suggest is your particular use case, you should make a set of maybe 10 or 20 different prompts and then be able to see for different tasks, which one is better for you. Okay, the Cohere one. This one we're seeing if you are up, you are above something. If you're below something, you are down. The opposite of up is down. Again, it gets to it but with maybe a little bit of weird reasoning. And then finally, we've got the Cohere Nightly model. It looks like it might get there. Oh, but then it says, oh, the opposite of up is not back. The opposite of up is not down. The opposite of up is not under. So, it, and it just goes on and on for that. And this is one of the things that I found doing this was actually the Cohere Nightly model, which I thought would be better. It actually turns out to not be generally for me looking at this. Next, we're going to take one of the questions from the FLAN paper, and this is the answer to the following question by reasoning step by step. The cafeteria had 23 apples. If they use 20 for lunch and bought six more, how many apples do they have? The answer should be nine, but we should get step by step. Okay, the chat GPT says cafeteria had 23 apples. They used 20, which means 23 minus 20 equals three. Three plus six equals nine. Therefore, and this is giving us a really good answer here, right? It's got the explanation, etc. The GPT-3 model, again, this wasn't trained on chain of thought prompting. And we really see this here, right? That we see, okay, it gets these bits right. So it's extracted that from the question correctly, but then it's, oh, 23 plus six it equals 29. and that's not correct, right? It should be 23 minus 20 plus six. So it's skipped a step there. If we look at the Aleutha model, the GPT, GPT J model, and like I said, this is, a, I wouldn't say a super old model, but it's a reasonably old model. You can see it's just trying to do completions and it's not really, I don't think this is fine tuned on any instructions. So it's not getting the great results for this. The FLAN model, this handles it perfectly. It gives us the exact answer that we want. The smaller FLAN model, the T5 one, doesn't do a great job. It says they bought six plus three equals seven apples. So it's getting its logic wrong. And that's probably just because it's a smaller model than this is 11 billion. This is 20 billion. Okay. The Cohere command model, the command extra large or extra large model, they had 23, it extracts the key bits of information, right? But it does an awful job at the math and basically says they have seven. If we look at the nightly model, it just tends to go on. It's going on and on for this. Next one up again, another question from the FLAN paper. And I think it's even in the Palm paper. This is definitely suited to a much bigger kind of model, right? Because we're asking it specific facts about people. So you can see that in here, when we're asking, can Jeffrey Hinton have a conversation with George Washington, give rationale before answering. Okay. So open ChatGPT basically starts off with a very long 
thing about, okay, could they travel together? Is this scenario possible? It goes through. And it's kind of off base though, right? It doesn't seem to know who Jeffrey Hinton is. It doesn't seem to have any dates for him there. This one, actually the, the GPT-3 model kind of seems to do better here. The first, Jeffrey Hinton is a living person and George Washington is a deceased person. Second, a conversation requires two living people to communicate with each other. Therefore, no, Jeffrey Hinton cannot have a conversation with George Washington. So actually the logic in this one is actually much better than ChatGPT for this. So that's thing to look at. Aluther, again, not so great. Jeffrey Hinton, oh, George Washington is dead. So it got that right. Jeffrey Hinton is not dead, got that right. Jeffrey Hinton is not a ghost, it's not a zombie, he's not a vampire. Okay, it's just doing completions, right? At this stage, we would be going, okay, this model is not great for, unless this is going to be fine-tuned more for instruction, we're probably not going to use this model. What about the Flan ones? Okay, the 20 billion Flan, George Washington died in 1799. Hinton was born in 59. He actually was born a lot earlier than that. I think it's 1947. So the final answer is no. So it gets the answer wrong, even though it gets a fact wrong. And with the T5, we also see the same thing. Gets the answer right, but gets a fact in there wrong. The command models. Is Hinton a real person? Yes. Is Washington a real person? Are they both alive? No. Are they both dead? No. Do they live in the same time period? No. Do they live in the same country? No. Do they live on the same planet? Yes. So this is interesting It's reasoning here, right? This is showing that you, maybe you could prompt this to do very specific things. Can they have a conversation over the phone? Yes, they could have a conversation on the phone. No, I don't think they can. I think if George Washington is dead, I think it would be very difficult for them to have a conversation on the phone. The nightly model, again, it's doing things like this, but it, it does actually come to the right decision of saying that they cannot have a conversation. But it's interesting because it seems to decide it. Can they both speak the same language? Which I think the language probably wouldn't have been a problem. The fact that one's alive and one's dead would have been a problem. All right, let's look at something a bit more creative. So this is where we're asking it now to tell a story. And these ones, we would definitely out of the box, expect the bigger chat GPT kind of models and GPT-3 models to do well. By the looks of it, they do pretty well. I'll, I'll let you just go through this. This is interesting though. This is where the Aluther one probably does better than it has on a lot of the other things. So it's actually got a story going. It's got parts of it, but then it just goes into an endless loop. So this could be because we're not setting a penalty. We maybe need to play around with the penalties for repetition and stuff like that in there. But the idea here is I'm setting them all to be the same. Okay. The Flan models, Jason was a professional carrot. He was an athlete. He was a great basketball player. He was a great football player, great basketball player. He was a great swimmer. So they get that bit. They just go into all the things that he's great at. And we don't get the actual story coming out there on that one. I think this is, you would run it a few times maybe to see, okay, again, on that one also, this could be a thing to do with repetition penalty. The command X large model, this seems to do much better though this time. You can see that it's got the whole thing about him being a sports fan. Then one day, so he's got this girlfriend, Jessica, cheated on him. He had an affair with his best friend. Jacobson was heartbroken. He started up to working at a farm growing carrots. He was good at it. He made a lot of friends. This is interesting. And unfortunately, he meets another girl who also cheats on her. She was the professional athlete. So it doesn't get all the facts right, but it gets perhaps more than the other ones did with this. And then the, the nightly model here is doing a similar thing to the normal one by the looks of it. So I'll let you go through and read that. One. The next one I thought was an interesting one that I took from the Flan paper. This is, I'm riding a bicycle. The pedals are moving fast. I look into the mirror and I'm not moving. Why is this? So this is a little bit like common sense reasoning here. So again, we would expect the bigger models to have to show more of this ability than smaller models. So we can see here that, okay, you're likely on a stationary bicycle or train. So ChatGPT does pretty well, right, at doing this. The old GPT, you are not moving because you are coasting. The bike is still in motion. Maybe this is slightly possible, but this is certainly different. Alutha totally wrong. The bicycle is moving because the bicycle is moving. The Flan UL2 actually gets it that I'm stationary, but it doesn't really explain that we're on a stationary bike. And then the T5 Flan is a smaller model. I'm looking at the wrong angle. 
So this is definitely the hardest, one of the harder questions, I would say, to some of the other things. This is definitely going to be more suited to the big models. So the Kahir mm. models do, one of them does quite well. The mirror is on a stationary bike. So that's interesting that the nightly one gets that. This one, maybe not, not as well. Okay, the last one I want to look at was fact extraction. So I've edited down the article from the last video where I did something like this, just to make it so that it'll fit in with the tokens. But basically we've got a sort of edited article about the recent Mobile World Congress something. We've got some facts in there about 6G. We've got some quotes from different people. And then we've got this referring to the OnePlus COO. And so we're asking it to basically extract the OnePlus COO. And this is the task that you probably don't need a huge model for, right? So if we go through and we look at this, okay, ChatGPT has no problems with this. It gets it straight away. GPT-3 has no problems with this. It gets it straight away. Looking at this, even the Aleutha one extracts out the right thing. It just puts in a lot of other stuff as well. The Flan model, it gets it. Both Flan models get it and both Cohere models get it. So it shows you that this task is probably not as hard as the previous ones. So if you had some kind of fact extraction, maybe that you would try a smaller model than paying for the open AI one all the time. Doing the same context in here and now trying to, ex we're just trying to get out what is supply chain innovation. And what I was looking for is this foldables supply chain innovation. So let's see, do any of them get this? It's a little bit vague in there too. The ChatGPT ones seem to give us much longer for this. So does it get two foldables in the end? No, it does talk about things like flexible LED screens though. So it's relying a lot on a lot of the weights, a lot of the information that's coming from its weights. So it's hallucinating an answer in some ways. And then the old GPT-3 is basically just giving us a definition of what supply driven innovation is rather than looking for what's in the actual, yeah, I'm not seeing anything about foldables there, rather than what's actually in the context that we gave it. The Aleutha one looks like it, it gets foldables, but it's got so much other stuff around it, it's not really useful. The Flan models both seem to get it. The Flan models I definitely think are very interesting to be used for fact extraction. That's one of the things that you could use them for passing across documents and stuff and extracting various facts that you need out of this. And finally, the Cohere ones, they, again, they seem to be more interested in giving you a definition of this than actually looking at the context of this. So the idea here is just to give you a rough idea of going through these, testing out various models. You can plug any models into this and try this out if you've got the access to them. And you could also load a model and just set it up locally with that. If people are really confused about that, I can do another small one of these showing how we would do that. Anyway, as always, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. I'm happy to answer them. If you found this useful, please click and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.